Hello, my name is Fikrat, Fikrat Valehli. Uh, I'm a researcher in economics and I'm currently studying and researching at Toulouse School of Economics in France. Today I will be talking about growth drivers in Azerbaijan, in Azerbaijan economy. Uh, and I will be focusing on sectoral decomposition of economic growth that we recorded over the last 30 years in Azerbaijan. Um, I will start by indicating, uh, showing the results of my research in uh, about the contribution of each sector to economy, to econ real economic growth in Azerbaijan. And, but I will not be merely stating the facts, but also I will be delving into uh, the story behind it. I'll try to put a story to the economic growth path of Azerbaijan. And based on that story, I will also try to project, the, uh, project some policy uh, proposals for the future of uh, Azerbaijan economic growth. Uh, I am also aware of the fact that this is a very um, expansive, it's a very huge area. That's why the research question and the research uh, elements are also very, can stay vague. Um, because recently in academia we are focusing on more specific questions and we are, we are trying to address more specific questions. But in this talk I'll be talking about very broad issues simply because this is the scope of the research at this point. And this research is not giving the precise idea of what to do but it's also it's just giving a general oversight, general overview of Azerbaijan economy and hence uh, helping policymakers to very slightly adjust to have some sunspot, uh, let's say, uh, sunspot to follow in the policy making process. And um, so the research, uh, you can see that I'm, uh, I wrote vicious cycles in growth. Vicious cycle in growth, and I mentioned agriculture, manufacturing, and mining sectors. Uh, so the vicious cycle in growth that I will be talking about is uh, how we are stuck in a productivity trap uh, in agriculture sector. And then I will basically evaluate the role of manufacturing and mining sectors as potential boosters uh, of economic growth that can take us out, from, uh, out of that trap. Uh, but I will also argue that there's a vicious cycle because I'll argue that uh, economic growth uh, boosters, uh, the traditional economic growth boosters like manufacturing sector uh, are not going to work in Azerbaijan economy. It's not going to be very helpful to boost us out uh, of the productivity trap that we are stuck in uh, agriculture sector and also in, to some extent in other sectors. But I will not be very bleak at the end. I'll talk about the possible blueprint uh, digitalization as a way out of this vicious cycle. Uh, so I will be talking about the missing sector in the vicious cycle, which is service sector. So I'll talk about the role of service sector and uh, something new, the new experience also in a global scale, how service sector can boost the economic growth, especially in a very stagnant economies or resource dependent economies. So in this slide, you can see the agriculture sector uh, share of employment. In, the, in general, you can see the sectoral share of employment. Uh, and here in Azerbaijan, we have that agriculture is holding almost close to 40% and recently 36% uh, in the sectoral employment. Uh, and uh, the, the service sector is the first one and then it's followed by agriculture sector and it employs approximately 1.75 million uh, workers. Also, uh, we can see per worker ag agriculture sector income is approximately 2.2 thousand United States dollars. Uh, it was 2000, uh, this, this data is 2019 and, like we've, and we can also see that it is the lowest among all. Uh, agriculture sector is the lowest among industry and service sector in terms of per uh, sectoral productivity. Also, it has stayed very stagnant over the last uh, 10 years. Uh, we can see this. And in this slide, you, we can see the growth decomposition, the sectoral growth decomposition of Azerbaijan over the last 30 years. So 
we can see that agriculture sector grew on average 1.6 percent year in a, on a yearly basis and of, uh, between 1990 and 2020 and this explains only 7 percent of total economic growth well uh, and we can see in uh, 1990s the Azerbaijani economy and especially the agriculture sector experienced a massive collapse uh, in its economic growth. Uh, it shrunk by 30% just in 1992. Uh, however, this massive collapse was not reversed immediately. It stayed over almost whole decade and the growth rates of agriculture sector started to pick up uh, increase accelerate uh, after 2000s. Nonetheless, uh, we don't see the drastic, uh, the reversal of the drastic uh, decline in agriculture sector. So agriculture sector grows on average stayed stagnant over last years, last 30 years. But now the question is, is this something problematic because it would be good to have an international comparison to extend to some extent to see if uh, maybe this is how it should be maybe if you're an agrarian society or uh, if you're a developing country agriculture sector maybe doesn't grow that much um, to have an idea how, where we are exactly let's compare ourselves with other countries we can see that compared to uh, developed countries per worker agriculture output in 2019 uh, in developing countries were above fifty thousand uh, above fifty thousand dollars, which is two thousand in Azerbaijan. So it's twenty five percent, twenty five times more productive in developed countries. Uh, and we can always uh, argue that well, developed countries has a very different style of, econ of economy. So maybe the comparison with more familiar countries, with countries that are closer to us in terms of their economic landscape uh, is good. And then we can look at Tur Turkey, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. And we can see that even in Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, in Central Asian economies, which are very close to Azerbaijan economy in terms of its economic structure, they still have very low compared to developed countries uh, sector productivity, but higher sectoral productivity in agriculture sector uh, compared to Azerbaijan. <clears throat> and also, we can see that share of agriculture employment in 2019 uh, has been highest in Azerbaijan compared to all of these countries. In the United States, it's almost in USA, it, in the USA, it's almost close to one percent. But uh, in countries like Turkey, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan, it is a lot. It's but it's still below twenty-five percent. But in Azerbaijan, it is thirty-six percent, which is uh, very significantly higher than even the countries that are closer to us. So here the question arises: We have a huge portion of labor. Force, huge portion of population stuck in agriculture sector, 36% uh, at least. And at the same time, we are also talking, saying that this sector has the lowest productivity. And in, in fact, it is uh, 2000, by 2000 uh, US dollars uh, per year, it is very low income sector. So we are facing some kind of now agriculture productivity trap here. But uh, so how to solve this? So what is the problem here? Uh, well, productivity is a problem, but how can we get rid of this solution? We need to increase a uh, problem. We need to increase productivity in agriculture sector. But once we start increasing productivity in agriculture sector, the real problem starts actually here because increasing productivity in agriculture sector by definition means substituting people with technology, <clears throat> automating the production process and therefore increasing the productivity and only after that per worker agriculture output will rise and start to converge to developed countries but that's a massive problem because in Azerbaijan once the 36 percent of your population is stuck in this agriculture sector firing uh, or, or, or uh, substituting workers with uh, automated technologies like robotics in agriculture sector will lead to, lead to massive unemployment. And uh, for example, the back of the envelope calculation 
suggests that uh, 5%, if we shrink the agricultural employment to 5% in Azerbaijan, then it will roughly yield 1.5 million unemployed people in Azerbaijan because now these people need to find jobs. But uh, so we have established so far increasing productivity in agriculture sector requires, it will bring benefits of course, but it requires a lot of massive sectoral and logistical uh, reallocation of the labor force because also these people need to reallocate uh, uh, their location to go to places where they will have uh, more abundant work opportunities like cities but once they go to cities it will become more uh, now it will create additional challenges in terms of logistics well how did developed countries uh, how did developed countries deal with this situation? Uh, so manufacturing sector usually comes as a savior here, as a savior of the economy, because manufacturing sector has different um, characteristics that kind of help developing countries to uh, increase their production potential and at the same time meet labor requirements. Like uh, we know that manufacturing is a labor intensive sector. And hence it uh, also, along with being labor intensive, it enables uh, labor to learn more skills, hence uh, work uh, process basically increases their skills and their uh, competitiveness in the labor market. Moreover, uh, we know that manufacturing facilitates integration to global supply chains and has a higher, uh, creates a higher export capacity to a state and it creates also larger domestic markets uh, and uh, once uh, and larger markets to access because once we are integrated with uh, export channels uh, with global supply chains then the size of domestic market is not restrictive to a country anymore but <clears throat> moreover we also see that uh, Roderick shows that in uh, his 2013 research that manufacturing sector uh, productivity increase basically converts to uh, developed countries when it's in developing countries. And um, so how is it in Azerbaijan? If you look at manufacturing sector in Azerbaijan, it has stayed stagnant over the last 30 years. The average growth of manufacturing sector has been 1.2% and over the last 30 years and also 6.2% uh, contribution to the total economic growth. So over the last 30 years, the economic growth that came from manufacturing sector has been only 6.2%, which is very, very low number. And the share of manufacturing in the value added growth is uh, 7%. Uh, so when we look at these, uh, the growth decomposition shows that manufacturing sector uh, declined, especially in 1990s, and then it couldn't recover back. And why is it the case? Because finding answer of why manufacturing sector has stayed stagnant basically affects also our answer to uh, the question of where to reallocate unemployed people from agriculture sector once the productivity in agriculture sector increases. Um, well, total factor productivity in Azerbaijan declined after uh, collapse of Soviets. We can see that it has been in the negatives during 1990s and there was a massive spike in 2006 uh, but then after 2010, the total productivity, uh, factor productivity growth, which is also uh, like uh, some kind of a measure for the potential of the economy, uh, TFP is a measure for the potential of the economy or like a productive capacity of the economy, even though it is a bit uh, vague term and needs a lot of clarifications or, or country-wise calibrations. Nonetheless, uh, it is a rough measure of the potential of the economy, how it changed. So we can see that after uh, the collapse of Soviets, the productive potential of Azerbaijan economy decreased and Blanchard uh, French economist Blanchard associates it with the disorganization effect that came after the collapse of Soviets. This disorganization effect is a combination of uh, collapse in networks, collapse in supply chains, uh, and 
He said that this, uh, this collapse, this disorganization effect, basically crippled the production process, uh, trade capacity of firms, and production uh, capacity of firms. And we can see that this collapse was so strong that it has never grown uh, back. Uh, and that's why manufacturing sector was one of the sectors that basically uh, stayed stagnant even after 2000, uh, even after 2000s, early 2000s. Um, also in Azerbaijan, along with the disorganization effect coming from the collapse of Soviets, we also have another reasons why manufacturing sector is not developing, is not uh, it's stagnating, so it's not a good solution to our productivity trap in agriculture sector. And this is the mining sector. In Azerbaijan, you can see we can see that from the slides uh, we have a huge fuel export dependence. Uh, the GDP depends approximately uh, 20 percent, uh, sorry, approximately uh, 30, 40 percent directly on the export revenues of fuels, min uh, minerals. And also there's a phenomenon called uh, Dutch disease, which is the, as we are exporting more of oil, uh, more of uh, mineral uh, fuels, uh, more for foreign currencies are entering to Azerbaijan economy and this increases the supply of dollars. As the supply of dollar increases, Azerbaijan manat basically appreciates in real terms against dollar. But as it appreciates, now it becomes uh, less costly to uh, imports rather than produce in Azerbaijan. So import sector of tradables, tradables are like machines or stuff that manufacturing sector would produce. Uh, basically um, uh, imports increase, but as imports increase, as it gets cheaper, then the production in the economy basically goes down. So now the, for the agents, for people, it's not very uh, profitable to go and invest in mining sector and help in the expansion of mining sector because simply we can just import. So this phenomenon is called basically the resource curse. Uh, which is crippling the productive capacity of the economies. Uh, this is not, uh, it is not necessarily established that resource curse will exist in every economy, but it, nonetheless, it's one of the factors why manufacturing sector in Azerbaijan has not increased, uh, did not grow that much. And uh, there are also other factors that are not necessarily related to our economy, but also related to, but uh, instead related to global economy, and this is a lesser comparative advantage in manufacturing sector. So over the last 30, 40 years, in the Eastern, uh, the Eastern economies basically gained a huge comparative advantage, huge competitive edge in uh, the tradable sectors, in manufacturing products. So now for Azerbaijan to basically get out of the local market, domestic market and going to international global market uh, is hard for manufacturing sector because there are many, there's a huge supply of manufacturing sector products uh, coming from China, uh, coming from other countries like South Korea and they could grow using manufacturing sector but it doesn't mean that we can do the same because they, uh, the huge supply decreased the international prices for manufacturing products down. So even though we can go to, let's say, global markets, the prices are low. So the investors in Azerbaijan does not, they do not have that much incentive to basically invest in uh, manufacturing sector. So the international markets become less uh, the, like lesser, comp uh, lesser comparative advantage basically decreases our competitive edge in manufacturing sector. Another problem with manufacturing sector, growth of manufacturing sector, is we have a small domestic market and lesser connectivity in the region. As the connectivity in the South Caucasus region is uh, less, it's because of some geopolitical or geographical reasons. We're a landlocked country, so uh, it's not very easy for domestic uh, actors to have uh, gain access to international markets. But uh, this basically decreases the size of market. But manufacturing sector is a sector that requires a lot of fixed cost. Uh, when, when you are opening a firm, the fixed cost of your investment is huge because the building the firm, buying the machinery, investing in capital and investing in initial labor costs, it is a lot. 
the only way to reduce the fixed ca capital is economies of scale. Once your once investor basically gains access to a huge large market, then that investor can uh, increase the production volume. But once you increase the production volume, the fixed costs per product decreases, so it becomes more uh, profitable for for that investor to invest in manufacturing sector, invest in uh, their firm. Uh, but that's a problem in Azerbaijan, as, we, uh, as I said, because of the connectivity issues and the size of the domestic market. So all of these reasons show that manufacturing sector is not the best sector that um, we can use for diversifying our economy. Because once we start diversifying our economy, in a very heavy orientation in manufacturing sector, these problems that we will face are not going to be uh, very easy to tackle with. And as a result, uh, it will still require a lot of time, a lot of uh, policies and strategies to tackle these problems. But how efficient, it is still questionable. So we go to last sector in our vicious cycle, and it's mining sector. And mining sector, is it a long-run growth driver? Is it a <clears throat> sustainable growth driver? We know that it's not necessarily the case and it's not solving our problem for two reasons. First, <clears throat> uh, mining sector is not a labor-intensive sector. Once you start investing in mining sector, the productivity can be very high. Per worker wages, uh, output can be super high. But it doesn't mean that people in mining sector uh, the firms in mining sector will be open to absorb many workers because it's not a worker intensive sector. So those people who are stuck in agriculture sector in Azerbaijan will not find jobs in min mining sector simply because the capacity of the mining sector does not allow absorbing, absorbing that many workers. So another problem that's not the only problem with mining sector. Another problem is, especially with developing countries, diversification is super important. Once <clears throat> the economy is getting super reliant on the uh, mining sector, then it hampers the potential uh, growth potential because every volatility in the commodity prices that the country is reliant on will uh, create a macroeconomic volatility in the country and this volatility decreases the uh, long-term uh, production uh, production uh, potential and at the same time uh, also growth in the uh, resource sector is associated with increase in the increase in the inequality in socioeconomic inequality and it also doesn't have that much of a uh, skill spillovers uh, because it's very contained or concentrated to a very small sector. So mining sector, which we are very good at, is not going to be the driver of our long-run economic growth. So it adds to vicious cycle rather than taking us out of the vicious cycle. So basically, the problem starts with huge portion of population being stuck at agriculture sector with very low income and low productivity. And we are saying that the only way to increase the productivity of agriculture sector is to basically decrease the labor force who is participating in agriculture sector drastically. But once we drastically decrease this labor force, these people need to find new jobs, new places to go. But these new jobs will not come from mining sector because mining sector is not a labor intensive sector. And also it's not going to give us a sustainable economic growth. But it can come from manufacturing sector, but as I argued, manufacturing sector poses significant challenges for countries like Azerbaijan who are landlocked, who uh, are uh, who has small domestic market and who has lesser comparative advantage to co in comparison to countries like China. Uh, so the manufacturing sector grows that this traditional way of getting out of poverty or getting out of uh, middle income traps using manufacturing sector will not necessarily or that easily work in Azerbaijan. So <clears throat> this is the vicious cycle which I wanted to present in this, in this presentation. And the scope of this presentation is not uh, about how we can precisely get out of this trap, 
but it's more like realization of this trap and to tackle some myths that we were always saying how to diversify our economy to manufacturing uh, or is mining good uh, for the economic growth. But I will still give a very small snapshot of a possible way out, which I haven't talked about, and it is the service sector. The service sector digitalization more precisely. It can serve as a way out of trap. It would be more of an Estonian model of economic growth. And digitalization of the service sector is extremely important in this case because we already have a huge portion of population, share of population working in service sector. But the only way to boost their economic income is to increase their productivity. But the productivity increase in agriculture sector uh, in, in service sector is different than the productivity increase in agriculture sector. In agriculture sector, if you increase the productivity, then people are basically getting jobless because the uh, automation is job replacing automation. But in digitalization, in the service sector, digitalization is a different kind of uh, productivity increase because usually we can use modern technologies that would be more enabling and that would be more complementary to the skills of workers in service sector, unlike agriculture sector. And these technologies could be, as you can see, 5G networks, Internet of Things, data analytics, cloud computing, AI and blockchain. And each of these uh, technological solutions have some application to some specific industry. Uh, they significantly increase the connectivity because now people who are living not in urban areas but in rural areas using the connectivity that has been enabled by these digitalization technologies such as cloud computing or, 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 or uh, 5G networks, they will have a faster access to market in an online, uh, in an online sense. So uh, once you have an agricultural domestic product at home in, a, in some village, that is far away from a city in Azerbaijan, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to get on the car and you need to travel to city and sell uh, your products and come back because this is very inefficient. The cost of going to city and coming back maybe is higher than the profit that you will gain even, so uh, the benefit you will gain. Uh, so, <clears throat> however, creating uh, online internet, uh, online market will boost the digitalization uh, will boost the productivity of these people who are sitting in rural areas and waiting to gain access to markets. Also, uh, blockchain can bring new advances in the financial service sector in Azerbaijan and these financial services are very exportable services. So now, and also there is no huge comparative advantage of uh, big economies like in manufacturing sector in the service sector in an international sense. So once you come up with these interesting startup ideas, uh, any enabling technologies in digital in service sector, then the uh, competition you face in global markets is not as stark as the competition you would face in manufacturing sector product global markets. So. Uh, and also, as I talked, it decreases transportation costs because it's a new service uh, and, and by enabling uh, people in rural areas to gain access to new markets in cities and enabling people in the cities of Azerbaijan to gain access to international markets, it creates economies of scale which, which creates additional uh, production incentives. So, service sector and especially digitalization of service sector can boost the productivity in service sector, can lift a lot of people from low income to towards higher middle income. And at the same time, it would create long run economic growth, sustain economic growth, and could get us potential out of this vicious cycle, this productivity trap. Thank you very much.